Hi, my name is Amanda Coolidge. I'm the interim executive director at BC Campus and the current chair of an organization called Doers 3. Today, I'm going to talk about four years in review, sustaining and maintaining a system wide OER collaborative. Before I do, I would like to situate myself. I currently reside and work on the unceded territory of the Chianu Beecher Bay First Nation. The Chianu people are part of a larger indigenous cultural group known as the Coast Salish on uh, southern Vancouver Island. Um, they're located mainly along the shores of the Beecher Bay, which you can see here is Beecher Bay, um, where they've lived for millennia. And the word Chianu translates from the Kalan language, the place of big fish, which really indicates the richness of sea life that has sustained the Chianu people for millennia. I've been reflecting on the genocidal actions of um, colonial ancestors at residential schools in Canada. To date, more than 10,000 Indigenous children have been found in unmarked grave sites. Genocidal actions in Canada is not something of the past. It continues to this day from colonialism, oppression, um, lack of access to clean drinking water, old growth logging, and the inactions of our federal government. I acknowledge that my ancestors were colonizers, settlers, and benefited from the colonial structures in place in the past and in place today. I seek change through the continued advocacy of indigenous rights, as well as to the, through educating my son of indigenous peoples and traditions. I'm also committed to reconciliation because of my work at BC campus and my commitment to education. As Murray Sinclair said, um, who is a former Canadian a member of the Canadian Senate, as well as First Nations, uh, First Nations lawyer, and who served as the chairman of the Indian Residential Schools Truth and Reconciliation Commission. He said, education got us into this mess and education will get us out of it. If you have not done so in the past, I think it's um, really important to identify where it is you are situated. <laughs> Um, and where you reside on your own land. And you can do that by going to native-land.ca. So what exactly is Doers? Well, Doers is Driving OER Sustainability for Student Success. It's a collaborative of a group of 30 higher education, um, public education systems and statewide province wide organizations that are committed to supporting student success by promoting free customizable open educational resources. It was launched in 2018 and it helps member organizations implement scale and sustain OER by advancing research and policy, sharing tools and learnings and showing how OER can foster equity and student success. In 2017, the University System of Maryland, the City uh, University of New York, and the State University of New York announced major expansions of their OER initiatives across all public post-secondary institutions in Maryland and New York. Leaders from these three um, large-scale OER initiatives met to discuss how they could further advance the role of university system and statewide higher education OER initiatives and how those play in scaling and sustaining academic innovation related to OER. Out of these conversations, doers recognize the other, that there's other um, higher education organizations and they found a network of experienced peers to be valuable resource to their own efforts to advance the implementation of OER programs at their institutions and in their areas. With the support of system offices and state province governments um, and the goal of developing a self-sustaining business model for OER, these initiatives really promise to reach impressive scale and improve access and affordability and achievement for millions of students. So Doers 3 positions member organizations to realize the promise of high quality, accessible and sustainable OER implementations to achieve equity and student success at scale. Leveraging the collective strength of the collaborative, Doers 3 members build capacity to take established OER initiatives to scale and shape national and state innovation in the areas of OER research, 
data, policy, accessibility, equity, and quality. As a group, Doers 3 really believes in supporting student success through the implementation of affordable, openly licensed alternatives to high-priced, traditionally copyrighted instructional materials. We also recognize that the choice of instructional materials remains the purview of faculty and that OER are an increasingly viable option for faculty seeking to prepare and curate relevant and engaging course materials. The following principles guide the collaborative's works and the efforts of the public higher education um, initiatives that make up their members. As part of the collaborate, collaborative members endeavor to develop a clear system-wide province-wide statewide rationale for adopting and scaling OER as an integral component of equity and student success, share learning tools and resources with the collaborative and with higher education organizations and the broader OER community as appropriate, collaborate in cross state province um, and cross province projects to advance research policy, accessibility, equity, and quality. Require all newly um, created OER supported by OER designated public funds to be openly licensed, easily discoverable, and fully accessible, and encourage affiliated institutions, systems, and organizations to do the same. At the system, state, or province level, engage with OER service providers that provide products um, that are fully accessible and um, um, provide day one access. And that would allow students to retain content and make content open and freely available outside of the platforms and encourage affiliated institutions with their system-wide, statewide, province-wide initiatives to do the same. In addition, we seek to drive OER innovation to enhance the higher education system by identifying gaps and coordinating the development of new content, ensuring discoverability, informing development of new platforms and analytics, and developing partnerships with OER vendors and service providers. In addition, it's really important to inform um, institutional system, state, province, and federal policy with respect to implementation and use of OER. So with all of this, we have three projects on the go. Um, and these projects, um, as you'll find out, have been generously funded um, by the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation. So in order, uh, the first part we're looking at is research. So we have research equity and capacity. But for the research group, in order to better quantify the collective impact of OER, Doers 3 is working on a new research uh, database. And we hope that the tool will help researchers easily access a wide range of valuable OER data. A central repository of OER data should present new ideas regarding methods, frameworks, and approaches to instructions. And in addition, having more OER data could it reinforce work on other aspects of OER, such as equity and tenure and promotion. The database will collect uh, data on OER use, course outcomes, demographics, teaching and learning practices, and course name or number. And the data would help cast a wider net in measuring the impact of OER because it accounts for socioeconomic data as well as efforts of educators. And in addition, while the cost saving aspect of OER has been central, uh, a central focus of much research, the database would aim to help all research ident researchers identify the positive impacts of OER on student learning, out, uh, student learning and success. So we are seeking contributions from um, all statewide, province-wide uh, system level institutions within the research offices to continue to gain guidance on what data should be required in this database. The second uh, group we have is the equity group. So the overarching goal of the um, equity group right now is they've been working on an OER equity blueprint, which is, um, to define, unpack, and explain the multiple dimensions of equity and foreground the role of OER in closing those equity, equity gaps. The blueprint itself is comprised of three sections, the first being an overview, a theoretical framework, and research foundation. Um, it looks at what is an OER quality rubric uh, blueprint, it talks about the vision, values, and definitions, and also sets up a research foundation. 
The second part of the um, the work is a detailed guide and self-assessment tool that integrates equity and equity mindedness in OER and mobilizes OER to close those equity gaps. And lastly, there's a series of case studies, the first being Affordable Learning Georgia um, and Accessibility by Jeff Gallant, BC Campus and Accessibility by Josie Gray, and the Ohio State University's Racial Justice Grant Program to Increase Diverse Voices in Course Materials by Ashley Midler. Um, the third group we have is a capacity building group and a critical what we've noticed within this group is that a critical guide to um, sustaining OER in higher education is recognizing the contributions by instructors who create and improve them as part of their professional work. In order to aid this effort, doers has developed an adaptable advisory model to help guide faculty as they attempt to include OER work in their tenure and promotion portfolios. And this model is no, in no way exhaustive and will likely be most useful either as a way for faculty to start thinking about how to best fit OER into their local TMP guidelines or um, as OER are adapted to those local concerns. And although this um, particular model was created thinking of indi individual faculty in mind, we do encourage TMP committees themselves to adapt and edit this document as a form of guidance. So we are aware that each TMP process is based on one's local institution and its guidelines. And although individual um, institutions and difference may differ from this model or matrix, in its categories, we found that most variations of the tenure and promotion guidelines can be adapted to teaching, research, and service. So while few institutions have recognized open educational practices as deliverables towards tenure and promotion, faculty in documenting their work within their portfolio should characterize their work using these terms to aid colleagues in understanding their contribution. For each contribution, we've uh, suggested whether the contribution could apply to those three categories. In some cases, we've marked multiple categories, which is most relevant, um, and which one is most relevant will depend on uh, your context. Um, so in addition, the matrix includes examples of how faculty might strategically consider about where their open education contributions would be most valuable and how to best frame the, those contributions. So a few lessons learned in the last four years is it's really tough to lead a volunteer led organization. And one of the things that's really important is that it is volunteer led, which means that it's really important to acknowledge the contributions of each person. And no matter what the contribution is of each person involved in Doers 3, it doesn't have to be um, you know, convening a committee, but uh, just as long as there's participation, maybe presentations or even note taking or providing resources, all of those contributions are valuable. Another thing is to be sure that there's clear communication and asks, especially when dealing with a group of volunteers who obviously have full-time jobs um, for themselves. And this is really important that all asks are very clear um, and actionable as to what is needed. Another thing is to really share the work that's happening, both the challenges and opportunities, and to be really transparent about what's happening. Um, and the transparency is really important when we're working in three different groups or three different uh, topic groups, but we wanna make sure that all of the groups understand the work that's happening across the organization. One of the great things about being a part of a small or a newly formed organization, even for years still toddler age, um, is it's an opportunity to shape an organization. So currently all members are working with us to figure out a governance structure as well as to identify membership frameworks. So what is next and what is happening? So, Within the equity group, we're really excited to announce that there's a call for proposals seeking uh, participants to pilot the equity through OER rubric with post-secondary educators across uh, the United States and Canada. Through a generous grant provided by the Hewlett Foundation, funding is available in uh, the form of six $10,000 block grants, 
to participating post-secondary institutions and one grant of $18,000 available to post-secondary education systems or state post-secondary educating uh, coordinating organizations. So there'll be a total of seven projects funded for one year. Proposals are due really soon, Monday, October 24th, and participants will be announced Monday, November 28th. More information about the grant through the call, including the call for proposals and interested applicants can be found at www.doers3.org slash equity cfp.html. This opportunity is currently only available to current doer member states and organizations. In addition, we are looking to build on the previous work with the Doers 3 OER contributions matrix, and we seek authors for a book length project centered around valuing open education in the tenure, promotion, and reappointment process. To that end, we're interested in case studies written by faculty, staff, and administrators detailing experiences trying to appropriately value OER and open education work in that process. So what we'd be looking for is um, seeking abstracts of no more than 250 words for potential case stories, case studies by October 24th. Um, they'll be con all case study authors will be compensated for their work a stipend of $1,000 and authors will receive half, so $500 at the start of the project and upon signature of an MOU, and the other half $500 upon completion and submission of a case study. And again, you can um, see more about um, our full call for uh, authors on the Doers 3 website. And lastly, I just want to say thank you very much for attending this presentation. If you have any questions about Doers 3 or the grants or becoming a member, please reach out to myself, um, Amanda Coolidge. My email address is there as well. Uh, you're welcome to reach out to Annika Manny, who is um, our one of our great leaders on this uh, Doers 3 organization at Edbridge Partners. And Annika's um, email is listed there as well. Thank you very much.